Shields up, Ironbreakers. We're kind of here coming at you with another video. Welcome back to Monster Hunter World. And with the Arch-Tempered Karen joining the ranks of all the monsters in Monster Hunter World pretty soon here. At least for the duration of two weeks, I believe that's how long the event lasts. I figured this would be a good time to bring you guys a good Karen build. At least what I believe to be a really solid Karen build. I'm naming this one Rubber Boots. And the reasoning behind that is because Rubber Boots is what you want whenever you are working in an electrical hazard environment and let's face it whenever a tempered karen or an arc tempered karen or an arch tempered karen however you want to say it joins the battlefield that's what the battlefield becomes an electrical hazard zone so hopefully the rubber boots here will help you guys out so let's get started when it comes to weapons i'm gonna bring out one of my personal favorites the tear off buster bomber this is a beast of a weapon you guys know i have my face buster build around this weapon but there's a very specific reason why i'm bringing out this weapon and that is because the wide shelling playstyle with gun lance is one of the best playstyles for beating on a karen why because it doesn't matter where you hit with your shells it doesn't matter if the karen is enraged or not it doesn't matter they're going to deal the same damage every single time the word you're looking for here is consistency because with other weapons when Karen becomes enraged you can bounce off or you can bring mind's eye so you're not going to bounce off but you're still going to deal less damage whereas with this weapon doesn't matter where you hit full damage every single time just keep on shelling and the Karen keeps on going down now if you do not have the tear off busted bomber maybe you have the rarity 6 version which also has wide shelling level 4 that will also do the trick and if you do not have either of these because you were extremely unlucky when the cult to Roth raid came around then you might want to consider getting the empress howl sticks that is the lunastra edition of the gun lance uh and the one that i'm speaking of specifically is the one that crosses over with xenogiva components the reason i'm going after that one is because it's got more uh decoration slots so you can slot in a couple of more goodies if you want to however you can get whichever one of those gun lances you want like if you think that you are very underprepared for the arch tempered karen maybe you want to get the guts version the version that comes with the guts buff my personal advice would be empress howl sticks but if you want to get the other one the basil goose variation that comes with guts that's completely up to you the only thing you really want is wide shelling now when it comes to augmentations i'm gonna go with health regen and defense increase now if you're getting the lunastra one you're only going to be able to put in one augmentation i would advise you to go with health regen and now you guys are wondering why defense increase two reasons this also increases your chances to every now and then receive reduced damage and that's one of the main things about tempered kieran he deals so much damage so i'm expecting arc tempered karen or arch tempered karen to deal even more damage than regular tempered karen therefore uh, being able to take less damage every now and then is going to come in handy at least in my opinion the other reason is a lot of people tend to focus on thunder resistance when it comes to karen and they forget the fact that karen also hits pretty hard when it comes to melee therefore do not neglect your regular defense people that's why we got health regen defense increase now let's get started on looking at the actual armor pieces so the first armor piece is shadow shades alpha now some of you guys might not have this and if you don't have this then i'm sorry i don't know exactly what you can replace this with there's a couple of parts here and there that you might be able to scrounge together but you're not going to get a set as good as this without the shadow shades alpha why do I want this? It's got stun resistance level one and it's got three level one decoration slots, which is going to come in handy. Now, I'm augmenting every single piece of armor to get as much defense as I can possibly get because I also have some armor pieces that are very low tier. Therefore, I need their defense to come up as much as possible. Then on the uh, chest, we got the Karen Jacket Beta. This is going to come in with Divine Blessing Level 2, as well as uh, a Decoration Slot 1, and it has High Thunder Resist. That's the other thing on the Shadow Shades, by the way. It has High Thunder Resist, so that's the reason why I'm using these two items right here. Then we got the Blossom Cuffs Alpha. I wonder how many people thought that you would actually be using uh, a Blossom Set piece on a on a piece of gear that you're using against a really significant monster right but the really good thing about this is once again it's got maximum thunder resistance it's got two level one decoration slots and it brings in paralysis resistance which is one of the skills that we're going after 
Then we got the Kirin Hoop Beta. Once again, maximum thunder resistance on this part. Also pretty good defense overall. And it comes in with Blight Resistance Level 1, which is another skill that we're going after. And finally, we got Kolf to Roth's Wrath Beta. The main reason why I'm going after this one is it's got really high defense. It's got pretty decent thunder resistance. It's not the best because you only have three thunder resist. The best is four. But it's still got decent thunder resist. And it has a tier 2 decoration slot as well as a tier 1 decoration slot. And I needed a tier 2 decoration slot in this set. You guys will see why. Then we're going to wrap things around with an artillery charm level 3. And the reasoning why we're going after the artillery charm and why the Terra Buster Bomber is such a good weapon for this set is because the only thing you really need to get the most damage out of this weapon is artillery level 3. That's all you need. Therefore, you get that artillery charm, you're set. You're good. You don't even have to worry that much about super rare uh, decoration slots. Well, there is one in this set, but I mean, we are fighting against an Arc Tempered Elder Dragon, okay? Then when it comes to mantles, this is also going to be important, assuming that the Arc Tempered Karen is going to share the same element as the Tempered Karen. I don't think it would make a lot of sense if suddenly Arch Tempered Karen is on fire. I think he's going to beat Thunder. I mean, it has to be. Either way, the ones that we're using is Thunderproof Mantle as well as, as, well as Temporal Mantle. You're going to need these two uh, mantles, at least in my opinion, because you're going to rotate through these in order to avoid as much damage as possible. When it comes to decorations on the Shadow Shades Alpha, you're going to get two additional Steadfast Jewels. That's going to max out your stun resistance, therefore making you immune to stuns. Then you're going to get a Thunder Resistance Jewel because you're going to want to have maximum Thunder Resistance, assuming that it's going to deal Thunder damage. Then on the Kirin Jacket Beta, we're going to get a Protection Jewel, which is going to max out Divine Blessing. And you guys will see just how ridiculous this is going to be. And then we got on the Blossom Cuffs Alpha, we have two anti terror Jewels maxing out our Paralysis Resistance, therefore making us immune to Paralysis. On the Kirin Hoop Beta, we have two Resistor Jewels and another Thunder Resist Jewels. Now, this is going to max out our Blight Resistance skill, which means we're effectively going to be immune to Thunder Blight. Now, I've been told that Thunder Blight is actually, uh, actually only increases the chances of you getting stunned, but I don't know if maybe Arc Tempered Kirin has a stronger version of the Blight that also puts a debuff on you that maybe increases damage dealt or whatever. Basically, we're going to go in fully prepared, and if you find out that, you know what, the Blight is actually not a big deal, you can replace these for two Vitality Jewels, that's going to be up to you. But again, keep the Thunder Resistance Jewel there so that you get maximum Thunder Resistance. Then we're going to get a Shield Up Jewel 1, or Guard Up Jewel, which essentially is going to make it so that you can block anything that includes the special lightning attacks that Karen does that are unblocked blockable normally you can actually block those with a shield jewel this is just in case you're actually caught in the middle of one of those lightnings and you can't get out in time block it and then a final thunder resistance jewel to max out your thunder resistance looking at the finalized build you have paralysis resistance level three stun resistance level three thunder resistance level three blight resistance level three artillery level three maxing out the damage on the shelling divine blessing level three uh, wide range and peak performance are just a consequence of uh, the Colt to Roth's Wrath Beta, so those are not things that we're going after, we just get them as a bonus. And Guard Up, which means that you can block anything. So essentially, to reiterate, you're immune to paralysis, you're immune to stun, you're going to have just about as much thunder resistance as you can get, almost. Uh, because I believe that if you have like a different uh, leg piece, you can actually get more thunder resistance. But this actually enables you to still have decent defense. Uh, you're going to be immune to blight. Every now and then you're going to take reduced damage. And Divine Blessing level 3 is actually going to stack with the defense augmentation that we have on the Teroth Buster Bomber. Which means that it is going to be very often that you're going to be seeing the reduced damage effect. As a matter of fact, on the first fight that I did with this set against the Tempered Kirin, he didn't even bring me below 50%. As a matter of fact, I think he barely scraped me below 70%. Okay, people? This is a super solid set, at least to take on Tempered Kirin, which is one of the reasons why I'm going to be taking this set against the Arch Tempered Kirin. And if that works out, then uh, good. If it doesn't work out, I will adapt and I will bring you guys a better build to fight against Arch Tempered Kirin. Hopefully you guys are looking forward to that fight as much as I am. <laughs> get it? Looking forward to fighting Kirin. But anyway, hopefully this will get you guys properly prepared and uh, be able to withstand the onslaught, the electrical hazard 
by using these here rubber boots. As per usual, if you guys enjoy my videos, remember, subscribe, hit the bell icon, click on notifications, and click on all so that you actually receive notifications for all of my videos. At this point in the video, we will no doubt have the end slate coming up with two suggestions of videos that you might be interested in watching, and if you are, all you gotta do is click on them. Otherwise, once again, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate everyone's support, and I will see you guys in the next one.